Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into a groundbreaking shift in the management of type 2 diabetes or T2D. What if achieving remission becomes the primary clinical goal? This could change everything for millions. So stick around as I unpack the staggering statistics from China and explore how this radical approach could impact you. So let's start with some eye-opening statistics. In China, approximately 12.4% of adults, around 140 million individuals, are living with T2D. The prevalence is even higher in urban areas, sitting at 14.1%, driven by sedentary lifestyles and processed diets. Meanwhile, rural regions are at 10.3%. But with Western dietary influences creeping in, this gap is narrowing. Worryingly, the prevalence dramatically escalates with age, affecting 20% of those over age 60 with a growing number of younger individuals being diagnosed. And the economic impact? A staggering US $70 billion in direct healthcare costs from medications, complications and hospitalization in 2023 alone. If we don't act now, the projected costs could exceed $500 billion US dollars by 2030. This is a public health crisis we cannot ignore. So what's the solution? According to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine or ACLM's position statement for T2D management, and I quote, remission should always be held as the primary clinical goal and that lifestyle medicine interventions that produce changes leading to remission should therefore become the standard of care. This statement was published in 2020, and you can check out the full paper in the link below. This is a significant shift from merely managing blood glucose levels with medications. It's inspiring and bold. So I want to deep dive into the implications of this shift for both doctors and patients. Let's take a step back and compare this to the traditional approach in managing T2D. For over 20 years since my medical training, the primary goal has been to slow disease progression using medications. There's absolutely value in this approach. Without modern medicines, many patients would face severe complications or end-stage organ damage, such as retinopathy leading to vision loss, nephropathy causing kidney failure, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, amputations due to poor circulation, and serious cardiovascular issues. However, a growing body of research is shifting the narrative among physicians. Now, many argue that reversing T2D should become the primary treatment goal, and that newly diagnosed patients should be offered this option. This perspective is supported by some remarkable results from recent studies on patients who achieved significant weight loss through fasting-mimicking diets. Bariatric surgery also contributed to this shift, and more recently, intensive lifestyle modifications have emerged as a powerful tool. The ACLM has established a clear definition for T2D remission. It involves reducing blood sugar levels below the diabetic range, with an HbA1c of less than 6.5% for partial remission and less than 5.7% for complete remission. Additionally, fasting blood sugar must be below 7 millimoles per litre for partial remission or below 5.6 millimoles per litre for complete remission. Importantly, this must be achieved without the use of any medications for at least one year. In contrast, the British definition is less stringent, requiring a minimum of six months of medications to qualify as remission. So what is intensive lifestyle modifications for T2D reversal? To understand the rationale behind this, we need to talk about lipotoxicity. The mechanism behind this is quite specific. Human physiology is designed to conserve excess energy as excess calories. So when we take in more calories than what we can burn, the body stores them, not just in adipose tissue or regular fat cells, but also in other vital tissues places like the liver, pancreas, and even muscle tissue. And this leads to a condition researchers call lipotoxicity. Lipo meaning fat and toxicity or the toxic effects. So it's toxic fat, 
These are intracellular lipids stored inside non-fat cells that inhibit their proper functioning. So, for example, when there's toxicity in muscle cells, also called myocellular toxicity, it stops the muscles from properly taking up glucose from your blood. And when it builds up in the pancreas, called pancreatic lipotoxicity, it affects the crucial beta cells, preventing them from producing enough insulin. Think about it as fat literally clogging up the machinery. Now here's the crucial and hopeful part. Studies have shown that dramatic caloric restriction can remove these fat deposits from the liver and pancreas incredibly quickly. We're talking in a matter of days, not weeks or months. This removal restores the beta cell's ability to produce insulin often before any significant weight loss. So this finding suggests that if the excess calories themselves that drive the cellular dysfunction and not just the excess body weight. The weight is more of a symptom-related outcome of the core caloric issue. So if this excess calorie and lipotoxicity is the root cause, do current medications for T2D target this? The short answer is no. I'm not an endocrinologist, but the basic science information on T2D medications is widely available. Most conventional treatment for T2D, like secretagogues, which push the pancreas to secrete more insulin, or taking exogenous insulin, or metformin, which helps reduce peripheral insulin resistance, might help manage insulin levels or make the body slightly more responsive. But they are managing the fallout like bailing water out of a leaky boat without plugging the hole. They don't address the underlying toxic issue. Now please don't stop your medications without first speaking to your doctor. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that medications don't have a role. Historically, they have helped slow down the progression to serious complications. Yet, I think it's time to reassess our approach as we gain new evidence. You might ask, if simply reducing calories can do it, then why isn't it more widespread? The issue here has to do with the dosing of lifestyle modification. Like medicines, dosing is the key to the response. Take aspirin, for example. You take a certain dose for a simple headache, but it also works to prevent blood clots. And the dose here is different and specific to prevent clots. Same drug, different dose for a different outcome. It's the same principle with lifestyle medicine for T2D remission. The lifestyle modification required to reverse T2D is significantly more intensive than to prevent or manage it mildly. Most of the perceived failures in the past of lifestyle medicine weren't because lifestyle changes don't work, but were likely due to inadequate dosing. For example, simply deciding to eat more salad or cut back on meat or increase steps are often insufficient to trigger the metabolic changes needed for remission. But let's be clear, Doing something is still better than doing nothing. But for remission, you need a truly therapeutic dose, not just a casual adjustment. So the key takeaway from the latest research is the intensity of lifestyle modification must be sufficient for a therapeutic effect. When this is achieved, the results are quite remarkable, especially for T2D patients diagnosed in the first eight years. Although there's benefit in those diagnosed for longer duration, so how intense does it need to be? Well, the studies showing dramatic results require a calorie intake of 600 to 1100 calories per day. That's the level of intensity required. So it's not a DIY, it's medically supervised. When it's intense enough, the studies show that 49%, almost half of participants, achieved partial remission. These powerful outcomes are found in specific trials such as the direct trial in the UK showing 46% remission rate at one year in the intervention group. And a smaller earlier pilot study known as the counterpoint study achieved a 100% remission rate. Another critical component of the intervention is de-prescribing of medications by medical doctors to safely manage blood sugar levels, especially hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. So this LM intervention is a multidisciplinary effort between doctors, dietitians, and other medical specialists. I know I sound like a broken record, but I have to repeat, don't stop taking your medications without first discussing it with your doctor. And remember, intensive lifestyle interventions 
require medical supervision by experienced professionals. I'll highlight what credentials and experience you need to look out for. In summary, addressing a lipotoxicity through intense caloric restriction addresses the root cause and it's the critical step necessary for reversing type 2D. By removing toxic fat from crucial organs, we can restore their function, improve insulin sensitivity, and significantly enhance the chances of achieving remission. This represents a paradigm shift in diabetes care emphasizing the importance of lifestyle medicine as a primary treatment goal. Check out the links below for certified lifestyle medicine providers, as well as information on legitimate lifestyle medicine societies and accreditation requirements. In my next episode, I'll be joined by a qualified dietitian who will delve into specific dietary strategies to implement this intense caloric restriction effectively, or compare the approaches with popular diets often recommended for TDD. You won't want to miss it. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for the next episode. Until next time, stay healthy and involved.